We promise you charts, viewers, and we shall deliver here. Um, the, the, the key point that I want to make here and, and turn the conversation, toward, conversation towards is the, the distinction between the, the, the business cycle and recovery and what has been happening in the economy over the last 30 years. Because there are trends in, embedded in the way the economy functions and for whom it functions that extend through ups and downs that happen with the business cycle fluctuating from 1980 to today. There's some big long-term trends that I think are really important to think about what is the kind of economy we're going to have going into the future. And just a few um, measures of this, and, and you were just talking about this, Tamara. This is compensation versus productivity, right? So this is productivity is how much a worker is producing, and compensation is how much they are getting in, in exchange for that. And we see that productivity, which is the red line there, is growing much, much faster than compensation, which beginning in the 70s uh, started to sort of stagnate, right? And this wedge has grown up where a worker you know, used to make five widgets, now makes 15 widgets in an hour, makes the same amount of money in real terms that they made when they used to make five. Actually, Actually, or less. Actually, yes. if you consider how many people have dropped out of the labor force, particularly amongst men, not amongst yeah. women, then, and you look at the median male of, of you know, working age, the, the wage has fallen. Right. I mean, that chart only shows people yeah. who are working. Right, that's a and good a point. Lot right. of so people if you take the whole, that's a really right. good point. Yeah, and I think your point about gender there is really interesting, too. This is something that I keep reading about more and more. The economy is really bad if you're a non college educated male. That's where you're in deep trouble. For, for us girls, right. things are looking a lot brighter. But yeah, there's a, with, there's with one caveat. Yes, with the caveat. One caveat, which the, is the pay gap is alive and well. Yes. Women um, still make less at every level of education. They're more likely to be uh, employed. Right. That's They're true. More likely this to is the, to this is the famous man woman. session that we've been right. hearing yeah. so much about, and yeah. a lot of that had to do with the, with the with the massive hit that the construction industry took. Yes, because Absolutely. much of what the, the economic activity yeah, around the housing bubble was in construction, right. which is which which was populated by a but, lot of men. So women actually did better during the recession, but they have not done better during the recovery. Oh, that's interesting. Um, that's largely because there have still been major layoffs at the state and local levels, and those jobs are disproportionately yep. female. Can, can I show another uh, another chart? Because I think this, this gets to something. This is growth versus hours worked. For growth versus hours worked. And I, to me, this seems like a key point, right? Uh, the, if you go back and you read about projections of the future economy back in the 19th century, right, and the beginnings of mechanization, there was this entire discussion about what are people going to do when they don't have to work anymore. There's an entire the discourse, right. right? The Jetsons. There's an entire right. discourse. The Jetsons work right. like six hours right. a week or something, right? There's an entire discourse around automation, mechanization, and sort of the post-work future of right. human beings. And yet, what we've seen is the opposite. What the graphs show is that Absolutely. as GDP goes up, everyone's working right. more hours. We're, we're working under the false presumption that industrialization was in order to help people work less. Industrialization right. actually occurred in order to distance people from the value they created, right? The, the assembly line is not there to make more widgets. Really, it's there so that the worker doesn't have to be specialized, so the worker doesn't actually add value to the widgets he makes. Do you so, think companies believe that? They, they add an assembly line they know that. I don't think they know that. I think, that we've, I think we've understood yeah, that for the last 600 years, that's what the industrial age was for. It was so that you can get cheap labor you go into the uh, the 13th century equivalent of the Home Depot parking lot and get some illegal <laughs> immigrants to like? go work in your fact. It was a little town square, right. basically, to get you wanted to have people that you could fire. You didn't want skilled workers. You wanted to disconnect the worker from the value he created. And that's, and that's but, but, the end game that we're at today. But here's the thing, is that the trends the trends that I think that are the most striking are the ones that start around 1970, as opposed to, say, the 1300. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, I, mean I, I, I mean, I agree with you that there's an entire... I mean, it's, the, it's, the, it's the operating system that we're working on. Right? Yes. And that's why we end up in a situation now where, where of course, if people have to work less to get the same amount of stuff, our economy crashes because we don't understand how to divvy out the spoils. It's not that we don't make enough stuff. We have enough houses. That's why we're burning them down in California. We have enough agriculture. That's why we're destroying stuff. It's, it's that we don't have enough jobs through which to justify the distribution of our spoils. It's not that we don't have enough jobs to make the stuff. What do you think about that, Catherine? Um, okay. Uh... <laughs> A, th a few different points. Um, one being that actually technological progress is generally good for workers so long as you have educational training keeping up, right? I mean, 
economists generally think of um, machines, technology, innovation as being complementary to labor. Um, and for, for many years it was. I mean, look at the 1990s, for example. We had this huge productivity gain. Um, people's wages went up. More stuff was being made. And, and the other advantage of, of higher productivity is that stuff gets cheaper. So, I mean, you have families who um, maybe they're still making the same amount of money as they did in the 90s, or excuse me, in the, in the 80s, let's say. Um, but because it costs less to buy a TV, um, to buy a cell phone, their, their quality of life, their living standards are better. The what? problem is that they're not educated right. enough to do the new types of jobs. I, I, this, is, this is an argument people make about, yeah. uh, about why we're better off now. And it, a, a lot of times you see it's, like, it's the cheap DVD argument. Right. And you see exactly. this all the time, right? When you talk about the current economy, you say, well, look, people, poor people have DVDs right. and they have smartphones, right? right? The, 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 the thing that, I, I, that is always striking to me is that the pillars of what we think of as middle class security, which are basically three things, education, health care, and housing, all of those things have gotten that really expensive, expensive during that same time. Right. So yes, people have smartphones, people have DVDs. Well, but I'm not the, saying that the, that that should be the entire sum of, right. of you know measuring progress. I'm just saying that in terms of a baseline, yes, some, for the poor have actually done a little bit better over the last few years, but they're still not getting the same gains that the very rich are. And that's a very different question. That's a question of equity as opposed to absolute living standards. This, the, Tamara, yeah. Well, I would say the living standards, like you said, that really matter to people's quality of life have gotten worse. They're much harder to Over what, what time period? Are we Over talking? the last two, three decades, absolutely. The buying power of the average household has declined um, because a lot more is going toward housing, even after the, the bubble burst, a lot more to healthcare costs, costs a lot more to send a college uh, kid to college today. So I think in terms of what it takes to have a decent quality of life, and that's not gadgetry, you know, we've sort of been pacified by our ability to buy a lot of cheap stuff. And we've been told that we should just appreciate that we can all buy a flat screen TV for a couple hundred bucks. But what we can't buy is a decent education for our kids for a couple hundred bucks or decent health care that's going to be there when we get really, really sick. Right. So I think we've lost a lot of ground in the last couple decades. Right. And, and, and part of that is due to the... the extent to which technology has replaced what we think of as employment. I mean, when you have an easy pass instead of six toll booth collectors, I know your argument is that, oh, well, the toll booth collectors now have to learn how to program easy passes right. so they can keep their jobs, but you don't need six guys programming the easy pass. You only need one of them. Right, but no, the I'm mechanism not saying that they're, re right. they're replacing, um, that they're, they're doing the same job within the same industry or, or otherwise programming that machine. The idea is that the, the lower skilled jobs are not really the, the high value jobs. What you want they're is... They're be mechanized. A, yes. You want a country where people are, are doing the high value stuff, the design stuff, the innovation, the types of things that, that pay high wages. The and German that economy, essentially. That, yes, that we export right. to the rest of the world. And those are ones, that, and those are, and those are the metrics that aren't really being measured on the charts. I mean, the real, the real metric we want to look at is corporate profit over net worth. That's the one that's been going down for 70 years now. Their ability to make money with the money they've collected. Right. They're very good at sucking money out of the economy, but they're getting worse and worse at actually making money with it. I want to I want to ask people what they think. I want to get to the deepest question, which is what an economy should be for. What do we want our economy to do after we come back?